Welcome back, Year 11s. Um, this is very much something new and something different. Uh, I'm hoping will be exciting too. You are going to be very much my guinea pig group uh, for me to testing my first ever YouTube video and first YouTube upload. Um, this is a new and different and hopefully exciting direction I'd like to try and take um, our lockdown learning in. And I wanted you, my year 11s, to be able to benefit from this first and foremostly before anybody else. So today's lesson is going to be about Hitler and his consolidation of power over Germany in setting up something known as the police state. So uh, we know how he achieved, how he became Führer. OK, that was what we looked at over the last lesson or two. Today's lesson is about the methods of control how Hitler um, controlled the country, controlled a massive country. And ultimately, we were going to be evaluating just how successful this police state was. So we've got some key words going on here. Um, get those written down. Make sure you've got the meaning to those as we're going along. This word here, totalitarian, yet yeah, definitely one worth looking up and finding out the meaning of. So starting your starting um, your starter activity is I'd like to spend a few minutes looking at this image here. OK. Um, what can you see in this image? Look at some of the things you can see in this picture. So we've got things I'd like to draw your attention to. We've got uh, uh, over here, we have got some men in some suspicious looking coats. We've got a man here saluting them. OK, we've got some lots of flags. Oh, we've got a lady there saluting. We've got lots of flags as well. Flags everywhere. Flags, flags, flags hanging off of everything. OK, this is quite interesting here. Look at this loudspeaker shouting, uh, shouting things out. Look, ein Volk, ein Reich, ein Führer. OK, and we've also got a man down here. What's happening to him? Where's he going? OK, and what do you think might happen to him when he gets there? So spend a couple of minutes analysing this image and thinking, finding out what might be in it. OK, once you've done that, OK, and by means, pause this video if you need to actually accomplish that. So only spend a few minutes, get ready to move on. So the police state then, one of our keywords is police state. Again, if you're not familiar with this concept, the idea of the police state, Definitely Google it, definitely get it looked up, write it down. So if you think about it, Hitler spent a great deal of time and effort, um, bloodshed, if you like, achieving what he, what he was trying to do, and that was becoming the Fuhrer. Um, the last thing he wanted, once he had achieved becoming the leader of an entire country, the last thing he wanted was anyone to come along and mess it all up. So what he wanted to do is make sure that there was no opposition whatsoever. OK, the last thing he wanted was an opposition um, of any kind from people in Nazi Germany. So the aim was to create a totalitarian dictatorship. OK, totalitarian dictatorship. Uh, again, look these words up, totalitarian and dictator or dictatorship, OK? Um, this would mean that there would be no other parties. He banned any other political parties. The only political party that could exist was the Nazi party. Uh, and in fact, all um, German citizens had to be party members. Everyone had to be a member of the, the Nazi party. So what this would mean is, is um, this kind of socialist aspect of the National Socialist would come out. Uh, everybody, the entire country would divert everything, everything they, all their work, all their effort, all their energy into serving the state. OK, and to providing what the state wanted and the state, what the state needed. Um, and ultimately what Hitler wanted. And the, in order to accomplish the enforcement of this, 
the Nazi party had a powerful range of organizations and weapons that they used to control Germany. So we had four main things, which four main ways, yeah, four main um, methods of control, the SS, the Gestapo, the police and the court system and the concentration camp. OK, so there is a table which um, is a part of this uh, this homework, this uh, this piece of work here um, is uploaded alongside of it um, or is within this particular um, this PowerPoint. So you've got uh, you need to go back to your textbooks. OK, and you need to find out. Um, there are these uh, these four about all about these four things and um, and add it into your table. This is a good 10, 15 minute task should take you a while to accomplish and achieve this. OK, um, add, add the information in either using the textbook, OK, or using the um, the attached resources uh, to find out a little bit more about them. OK, take some time to do that. Pause this video and then come back to it. So we've got lots and lots of sources. There's sources in your books. There are sources at, attached to this PowerPoint and sources attached to um, this, the, the show my homework. You need to go through them, start reading all about these sources. Yeah, thinking about all the different, um, what the sources are trying to actually say. Um, when it comes to source work, okay, when it comes to actually using sources, a lot of the time you will be asked about their usefulness. How useful is a source yeah, in telling us this? Yeah, what does this source tell us? What is the difference between these sources? Okay, all right, so make sure so you need to get um, plenty of practice using the sources and, and this is an excellent chance to actually accomplish this. Okay, so Read through the sources about the police state uh, attached to this PowerPoint, okay, and answer the questions. Here is a utility question, okay. How useful is sources B and C? There's C for you. So how useful are sources B and C for an inquiry into the way in which the Nazi police state affected Germany in 1933, okay. All right, so use source B and C and your own knowledge of the historical. So remember, how useful, how useful, okay? Uh, let me just bring the highlighter up here. How useful, answer the question, guys and girls. Answer the question. If you don't say how useful, yeah, if you just say what is in the source, then you're doing yourself a disservice, yeah? You must say and start off your response with the language from the actual question itself. Yeah. How useful. I think source B is very useful for an inquiry. And I think this because, yeah. Let's just take a few minutes to look at this. Look at what's going on. It's a photo sh photograph showing the police, communists, uh, police arresting communists on Hitler's orders. So nature, origin purpose okay what is the purpose of this right it's so thinking about the origin it's from 1933 so it's a primary source what's its nature and its purpose okay all right could it be a piece of propaganda highly likely yeah it's very very unlikely that this particular photo would have been taken without the permission of these guards so chances are it is a piece of propaganda it is a piece of it's a primary source uh its origin almost invariably and undoubtedly has come from the party itself and it you know so what's it trying to say what's it trying to do what's it trying to achieve okay don't just explain what's going on but explain why it's doing what it's doing how it's doing what it's doing so what about the police state then okay uh, we, we, um, uh, the certainly the Nazi Party would have had us believed at the time, okay, um, 
and the, the propaganda machine of the Nazi party would like the, the world um, to believe that it all worked beautifully, yeah? And it was an ideal utopian state. The irony is, yeah, the actual irony is, is it was very chaotic and disorganized, okay? A lot of this issue had to do with the fact that Hitler really picked and chose over what he wanted to do, what he wanted to achieve. Yeah, what was important to him? He wasn't a particularly hard working man. He would work hard at what was important to him, what he thought he should be doing. But at the end of the day, yeah, that he picked and chose. So he loved his speaking. By all means, he loved his oratory, his talking to his crowds. He loved the attention that got him, okay? But he didn't like his paperwork. He didn't like making decisions. Yeah, he didn't like um, essentially doing his job. He didn't like, okay, doing the ordinary everyday administrative aspect of his role as Führer. Sure, he loved the, um, you know, how it made him feel. He loved the fact that he was important and the attention it got him, but he didn't like to have to do the work alongside it. So here's source C then. So uh, again, it says source A and source B in these questions at the bottom, but it's irrelevant what actually it's talking about. We're talking about these sources up here, okay? So source C uh, is an incident reporting in the Rhineland. Okay, so this is a newspaper. Again, July 1938. It's highly likely thinking about the nature, the origin and the purpose. Okay, so it's highly unlikely that this particular paper wasn't under the control of the Nazis at the time. Okay, um, but it might well have been. Yeah. And so think about the nature, the origin and the purpose. Would it be a free speech? Would it be free press? No, because we know that uh, no free newspapers are allowed to exist. Yeah. So what does it actually say? So the nature, the origin, the purpose of nature is it's a primary source. The origin is that it comes from a newspaper and it's highly likely to be a piece of propaganda. The purpose is, is to get people thinking that and this is what we're going to be looking at today. In a cafe, a 60 year old, 64 year old woman remarked to her companion at the table. Mussolini has more political sense in one of his boots than in Hitler in his brain. OK, so the remark was overheard five minutes later. She was arrested and the Gestapo had been alerted by telephone. So. All right, what is useful about it? What, is, what does it tell us? What doesn't it tell us? What is useful about it? What isn't useful about it? OK, so, yeah, we know maybe we can, you know, what it is telling us that, you know, what they what people wanted to believe at the time was that yeah, if you if you spoke out, that's it. You were dealt with quickly. Yeah. And therefore not to speak out. That's, that's what it is trying to tell us. OK. Uh, how useful is it into knowing exactly how well the country is run? Not particularly well useful, okay? But how useful is it in, in, to, in to, as a piece of propaganda? Very useful, okay, into what they wanted us to think, okay? So think about nature, origin, purpose. So this is a table you could use. And I, you know, if you want to actually evaluate any of the sources attached to this particular PowerPoint, OK, or any of the sources that are attached to the resources or in the textbook, draw this little table out. It's great when you are actually answering one of these exam questions. OK. All right. You could you've got five. Give yourself four or five minutes to plan this. OK. Um, and draw this out on your piece of paper if it works for you. Think about some of these questions. Okay, think about some of this. Think about your own knowledge. Yeah. Try and answer some of these questions about the sources that you're dealing with. Okay. When you consider the content, the origin and purpose, nature, origin, purpose, tell me about what, it's not just about what's in the actual source, 
but where does it come from and what's its point? Okay, so again, try printing this off, try using this, yeah, when you are actually dealing with sources, have a go. Here are some sentence starters you can use when it comes to actually answering some of the questions. Again, it says source B here, okay, but that will obviously you will actually um, replace that which with, with whatever source you are using, okay. And look, the language of the question, source years B is useful because, however, source B also holds some limitations. So what, what, how is it useful? How isn't it useful? Okay, it's, don't forget, answer the question. A lot of people fall flat uh, when it comes to doing these questions because they don't answer them. Um, if you want to have a go at any of the questions, um, uh, evaluating any of the sources, pick two sources yeah, and answer a question here. Here is kind of a model question you can use. How useful are sources B and C for an inquiry into or A and B or whatever, okay, whatever these sources are, explain your answer, use your own knowledge. So pick two sources, have a go at actually evaluating them. There's loads in the textbooks, there's some attached to this, okay and have a go answering this question. When you've done that, this is a useful mark scheme. Yeah, one you should be well familiar with. Go away and assess yourself. It shouldn't take you more than about 15 minutes, ladies and gents. Okay, remember in the exam, time is critical. A mark, a minute, a mark, a minute. Just to recap then. So have a go answering this question. Yeah, checking your progress. Do you think, having looked at what you've looked at today and looked at some of the sources that you've evaluated, do you think it was completely successful when controlling Germany or not? Explain why. Uh, one of the few, one of the lessons we're going to be moving on to soon is we're going to be looking at opposition to the Nazi party. Okay. By all means, if you want to read ahead to help you answer this question in your textbooks, please do so. So to finish things off then, ladies and gents, got some questions here. I would like you to have a go at answering, okay. When was the SS formed? Who was its leader? What was the SS's main aim? Who set up the Gestapo? What did they have the power to do? How many people were under arrest for crimes against the Nazis by 1939? What did German judges have to do when they became a judge in Nazi Germany? Who ran the concentration camps? Nine and also number 10 give two types of groups that would have been sent to the camps. OK, so again, pause this, pause this video, go away, spend some time answering this question and have a go at completing it. You should be able to get all the information from the attached resources uh, and also from your textbook. OK. Right, how well did you do? Here is a chance for you to check your questions and how well you've done. If you still haven't done these yet, pause it, go away, answer them, come back and check. Okay, right, are you ready? So, 1925, Heinrich Himmler, destroy opposition, Hermann Goering, all the names coming out now, look, they had the power to arrest citizens and send them into concentration camps. 160,000 people were under arrest for crimes against the Nazis. German judges had to swear an oath of loyalty to Hitler himself. In fact, pretty much everyone did. The people who ran the Nazi concentration camps were the SS and the SA. So this is these are some of the people that could be expected to be sent to concentration camps if they were caught. Jews, political prisoners, so people who had different politics, Nazi party, ex-members of pre parties who uh, had been disbanded and made illegal, sexual offenders, that would mean people who were perhaps um, homosexuals, okay, or transgender people. The work shy, i.e. people who just didn't want to work, couldn't be bothered to do their work, okay. Religious groups, so 
anybody who was from an extremist religious group. So not just Jews, but people like Muslims, okay, or, or Buddhists, or anybody who had a, a very strange or different religion from what was approved by Nazi Germany. Foreign groups, this could be absolutely anybody, yeah? Mostly people from outside the country who could be arrested and accused of being spies. Professional criminals. So if you are kind of one of those people who liked it, uh, whose job was or saw their job as being a criminal, such as a bank robber or something like that, you could find yourself in a concentration camp. Okay, so hopefully, ladies and gents, um, doing this video by YouTube has been useful to you. I'm hoping that you have found it a little bit more interesting and engaging. Uh, I'm going to be doing a series of YouTube videos uh, for all my lessons. You will find them here on this channel. Okay, take care and uh, thank you very much for helping today. Here is the uh, aforementioned, ladies and gents. Um, uh, this is your aforementioned resources I mentioned previously. Sources for you to use. Okay, you can print these off and evaluate them. Thank you.